I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Classroom Connections. Today is going to be a really interesting show. We're very, very fortunate to have a lot of people on the show today. And I'd like to start with my guest that's sitting across from me, Katie Dillon, who is the Development and Outreach Library Librarian at Blackstone. Katie, welcome to the show. I am so happy to have you here, and it's a story how I got to meet you. And actually, be, well, um, before we get into it, why don't you introduce the other guests? They're over there by the 3D printer. Sure. Uh, with me tonight, we have Rishi, we have Kyle, and we have little Lila. They're all really interested in the 3D printer. Uh, Rishi and Kyle have been working with us at the library in part of our Maker Monday programs for middle school kids. Um, they have been coming week after week, program after program, and have really been instrumental in getting this program started with us, learning the 3D printer and all the other equipment in our Maker Lab. Well, I think it was a great idea to bring the kids. Let's just come talk to the kids for a second. Uh, Rishi, what made you, where do you go to school? Um, I go to school at Walsh Intermediate School. What grade are you in, honey? Um, I'm in sixth grade. What made you get involved in this program? Um, I was like interested in, with 3D printer from the beginning, but when I saw this program, it was a chance to um, get into 3D printing. Good. What's going on right now in that? Um, right now, the 3D printer is actually printing a name tag here. In. And how much? How far along is the printer? Um, the printer is 11 minutes and. It's 70% done. While well, we started this before the show started, and because we wanted to make sure that we would have a chance to show what we printed, and I just want to let the audience know that if they hear a sound, that's the printer working. Kyle, you're also in the Maker program. What grade are you in? I'm in fifth grade at, at Walsh Intermediate School. And what got you involved in this? I got. I wanted to get involved with 3D printing and the pamphlet made me like, really interested. Now, um, the pamphlet, this is something that you put out, Katie. Yes. Yep. And you, did, and you um, showed it at all the schools that the, are you sent it to all, I'm trying to just get in the program. You sent it to all the middle schools, or who got a copy of this? Uh, we have copies at the library. We handed them out um, before we started the Maker Monday program. We visited the middle school. And so we would hand it out to the media classes that we visited. Oh. Um, but w whenever we have the opportunity, I'm giving these things out like candy. I just I want everyone in the community to know what we have and what they can do with it. Yes, and that's the purpose of today's show. And the last guest we have over there, now you might know this other little pumpkin. This is your daughter. Now, um, Lila, what are you holding? Um, it's, this is a, um, Star. And where did you use that star? Um, I, it was a tree, uh, my Christmas tree top one. Oh look, you can put your little finger there. Was a, that is so cute. And so that was on your Christmas tree and you made it with this program. Um, yeah. That is fantastic. So I want you guys to keep an eye on that. And what are the kids watching for while we talk? So the 3D printer is a very mechanical piece. There are a lot of moving parts and things can go wrong. Um, the filament, that is the material used, hangs off the back on a spool and a lot of times it can twist on itself. Like something like this? Just like this. So this is, um, the filament is the plastic like this and it comes up through the 3D printer. It melts it through the extruder and then the melted layers go one on top of the other to build it up. As the 3D printer prints, the spool spins and sometimes the filament can twist around on itself and get jammed. So the boys are keeping an eye on the um, spool in the back, making sure that they have continuous flow. Interesting. Boys, you let us know if there's going to be a problem. But I'd like to kind of go back almost to the beginning to how this all started. As many of my viewers know, I'm retired. And I know I look very young for my age. Okay. Don't you say a word. And um, I noticed in on the website, Blackstone Library's website, that you were having a 3D printer workshop and anybody could sign up and it was an excellent price. It was free. It's free. And I never really had any designs that I was going to be making 
3D objects, but I really wanted to know what it was about. So when people talk about it, I had firsthand experience. And I went in and I was mesmerized. I lost my little frog that I made, but in here you told me this is a lizard, but you made, let me see if I can get this, there we go. You made this into, on the 3D printer. Mm -hmm. How does something like this work? So for a file like this, I'll hold this up. Somebody creates the design file for a piece, um, whether it's a lizard or a bookmark um, or even a chain. Mm -hmm. Somebody designs this with software, and these were uploaded to the internet, um, and then we were able to download them for free. The files get put onto a, an SD card, which pops into the printer. You load it up, and then you hit print. And what it does is the filament comes down from the top, the plastic is melted through this really hot extruder, and just like you're decorating a cupcake, it goes down and it lays down the first layer of melted plastic in the shape of the design. Uh, and then it just goes layer upon layer upon layer, building up into this final 3D object. My director just came through and he wanted to know what kind of files it, you're, you're putting these into. What are what kind of files? So the file, it's there. Um, the most common that I've seen online is the STL file. Okay. So you design an object in this STL file, and anybody can then take that file and add on to it, make changes. Oh, now that's interesting. So there's a basic file. Mm -hmm. I think if you hold it, it's better because it's in, in. So anybody, and if I wanted to add a third leg or two tails, mm -hmm. I could do that. You can. There are, oh, that's so interesting. There are a lot of uh, free software programs available online, which is what we use in the library. We show you how to use and how to download and how to use these files. So then you can take something that you find online, you can add another tail, you can add a horn, you could put your name into a side, all from that STL file. To get it actually printed, there's a second final process that you take the STL file open it up in another free program that is part of the MakerBot desktop software suite. In that final step, you tell it how much plastic you want on the inside. This is not a solid piece. It does the shell around the outside and there's about, it's called infill. So this is 10% infill and it makes these honeycomb structures as it builds up. So it's mostly filled with air. So you tell the printer how much air you want on the inside, what temperature it prints at, how fast the extruder is going to move. All of these settings are in there. And from that, it generates this final X3G file. And it's the X3G file that is the one that tells the printer where to lay the plastic down. Now, do you put that on one of these, um, the files? Do you, do you save it to this to put into a computer? Or I, I'm not sure if that's what he was asking, too. Yeah. So. Anybody who is designing something at home or in the library who then wants to bring it into print, they can bring it in on one of these flash drives. You put your file on the flash drive. You want to bring the STL file in at the very least. If you then take that final step and create the X3G file, that's great. Bring them both in. If you have a flash drive, you can put it on here. But ultimately, the card that's going to go into the printer is this SD card. Um, this printer can only read up to a two gigabyte SD card. Most of them on the market now are higher than that, and it won't read it, but we have a ton at the library. So if you bring your flash drive in, we'll switch it over to our SD card. You can put it in the lab, into the printer and get printing. Well, I think the amazing thing to me is um, I'm, I, I'm trying to change my mindset because I'm, ooh, now what is that? The, it's making a funny noise. What does that mean? It's done. Oh, that wow. Means it's done. So then, uh, why don't, um, who would like to grab that? Okay, uh, Kyle, bra grab that and bring that over and hand it to Katie. What do you. Does he, does he need a tool? Let's see if you can use this. <laughs> now, sometimes <laughs> when you have um, a print. What happens is the first layer has to melt onto the build plate. 
and it has to stick in order for the subsequent layers to be able to build up in the right spot. Right, right, right. So because that first layer is melted on there, it can be tricky to pry off. So we have... Um, Looks like the boys are having a little bit of a problem. Yeah. We have some pry tools that we use to get it off. Sometimes you just have to use a little thumb power. Kyle, why don't you move to the side so the camera sh can get a shot of it, too? And can you work from the side to get it out? Yes. Yep. Okay. So now the camera's watching you try to pry that out. And you got it. Okay. Hand that to Katie, please. Thank you so much. All right. So the finished product is our JBML K-Ring. Key ring. Um, this was a file that I created through a program called Tinkercad. Tinkercad is what we've started um, our Maker Monday group off with. It's an online program. Anybody can use it. You go on tinkercad.com, sign up for a free account, and you go through a number of tutorials that show you how to create your own files. Um, so this was a simple key ring that I did. And right now, you're breaking it. Breaking it. So this was printed with a thing called a raft. The raft is something that makes it easier to pry off the print bed, but it's not part of the final file. So this just easily peels away, and then you have your finished product. Now, and then what do you do with this, then? What do you... That, it's, um, basically, it's nothing. Um, this filament is made of um, PLA. It's polylactic acid, and it's made from corn plants. So it is compostable, it's recyclable. So we've been saving all of our little bits and odds and ends and we'll be storing them. So if anybody has a compost heap that they need some plastic for, we're happy to donate it. This looks like it should be a little Christmas ornament. It could be. You know, don't you think this would make a cute little Christmas ornament? Put your name on it, hang it on the tree. I think that would be adorable. You're yeah, your daughter, the kids agree with me. Yeah. I hate to, this, this is so phenomenal. I hate to see you throw it out. That's yeah. the only thing. Well, the nice thing about this plastic is you can um, paint on it with acrylic. Acrylic sticks well. Sharpies work well on it. So you could take something like this and then make it into a luggage tag or a backpack tag just by writing with Sharpies. Oh, wow. Wow, now that's a good idea. Um, Lila, I'll sell this to you for 10 bucks if you want. <laughs> Okay, it was just a thought. Um, now, what I want to talk a little bit about is what, what really surprised me about the workshop when I attended with you was that this was even available at the library. I was kind of shocked. And when we talked earlier, the expression that I used, it's not my grandmother's library anymore. When did you all change? <laughs> yeah, I, and, and you didn't tell me. Yeah. So when did this all change? Well, libraries have always been a reflection of their communities. Um, throughout history, they've always strived to provide materials and resources for the community to use to get their own education, for enrichment, for a number of reasons. And we still have the books that a lot of people associate with the library, but Libraries all over the place have begun. We have computers, we have laptops, we have iPads. We're not the only library that has a 3D printer. Um, but I don't think a lot of them have it, do they? Not yet, but they're definitely looking for ways to either get them or get access to is, them. Is it, is, there, is it expensive? Like, I'm looking at that, and it's obviously not something I would even know what it was unless I've now seen it, but are they expensive items? They can be. Um, this printer cost about $2,500. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, machines that they can print metal um, that are like $800,000. Um, there are cheaper... Oh, you told me that, that they print metal and then they print something else. Wood you mentioned? There's some kind of composite wood material that some printers can uh, use. There's... Um, nylon filament, there's different types of plastics, um, there's metal, and uh, the medical industry are really pushing for their printing cartilage. Um, they're, they're trying, I've heard, for stem cell printing, organ printing. That's probably way in the future, but the interest is there. Stem cells and organ printing? 
How could you, so you, if, oh my God. It's not happening yet. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I am. I, I am. I am. Wait, wait, wait. We'll but, let yeah, it. <laughs> no, we're no, no, I'm thinking, oh my God. But so let's just say um, now the kids, now have they used the printer before, the 3D printing? They have. Um, Rosh, Rishi, Rishi is, what have you printed before? Um, I printed a snowman and um, a lot of other things. Like, and what did you do with your, how, like, how big was your snowman and what else? Um, probably about like this big. Oh, wow. And what else do you do? Remember anything else you printed? And, um. Well, that's okay. I'll get back to you. Some action figure. Uh, Kyle? Yes. What did you print? I printed a fish monster. A fish monster. Explain that to me. Um, it was about this big. It was sort of like a, it was like a dragon almost, but the file was fish monster. Oh, did was, it, was it scary looking? Not really. It sounds scary to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. You know, I, I'm just saying. And did you have a favorite item that you made on this or not, Kyle? Or you um, just like it all? I just I like everything about I like everything about it. Oh, that's, I don't have a favorite item. That's great, uh, Lila. What do you th what, did you have? Have you printed many things on that? I haven't really printed anything, but um, I have a few things that my mom printed for me, like a, a little kitty cat because I love kitties. Oh, I do too. <laughs> I do too. Now you were telling me that you had an idea that you wanted to do, though. Explain that to the audience. Um. Had to do with a game board? Um, oh, like, so I wanted to make a, I had an idea for a board game, and I wanted, wait, like, so I wanted to make, it had to do with frogs, so I wanted to make, like, four little frogs of different colors, Good. to make, like, for the board game, mm -hmm. so that I could make, so I could put the board game together without having to, like, to use Paper cardboard. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I have to ask you a question based on a previous conversation I had with you. Are there going to be worms in your game board? I'm just asking. Are you going to put worms in there? No. Oh, good. Because cause I just found out that you love worms. And Mike came through in my ear and said, there better be worms in your, on your game board. I'm just saying. Okay, well, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Now, I have to tell you... Um, Prior to doing the, setting up the show with you and, and today's program, I was reading the New York Times, which is my favorite thing to do in life. And I was shocked, shocked that I saw in an article in the New York Times, they're making 3D printed cars that work. Are you shocked? It's amazing. I'm less shocked than from using all this stuff than I would have been, but yeah. I, they're doing I'm a lot shocked. of good things with this. And so they're just saying, now this is, ob and it's ready for the road, and they were actually driving on it, and they're talking, obviously this is a prototype, but they're talking about what they're going to be doing in the future. Hmm. And ever since I went to your workshop, and I, I've been chatting with people about it, actually, because I was just so impressed. It's so different from what I'm familiar with, and not that the viewing audience really, really cares that I went up to the dentist and have to get a crown, but I discussed with my dentist that they're going to be doing that also, and some people already do that. What do you know about that? Yeah, from the different workshops that we've had, I've talked to different people, and one thing that comes up a lot is they mention their dentist has this ability to scan their tooth and then with their machine print up a whole new tooth while they wait. And it's just as like any other crown that you would get, you know, that you used to get. It's the same material, but it's just 3D printed. It's, it's just a whole new world out there. And you did mention somebody at the workshop that actually made uh, something, an arm for somebody. Yes. Can you explain that a little bit? There's um, Cameron O'Neill is a Branford High School senior and he got a 3D printer for his home, started messing around with it, and decided that he wanted to do something really special. And so he found this group called Enable the Future, I think it's just called Enable. And what they do is they partner people who have 
3D printers with people who need prosthetic arms or legs. And so then the two people meet, they take measurements, they figure out what they're going to do, and the person with the 3D printer creates an arm or a leg for this person. And I've seen a few other news stories around the country of other people doing it. So this Cameron, this high school senior, met with a man from Hartford who was born without a hand. And over the course of a year, he printed up different parts that he found the files online, some he designed himself, and he was able to produce this mechanical hand for this man. Put, it was strung together with fishing wire, but it was done in such a way that when he turned his wrist this way, the hand closed, and when he turned it that way, it opened. And afterward, he said that he was able to take a drink of water with his mechanical hand without spilling a drop. And it was the first time he's ever done, been able to do that. Oh, that's amazing. And it was for about $50 worth of materials. Oh, that's amazing. It's amazing. It's really, there are some really great things you can do with this home version desktop printer. And $2,500 is not out of is not out of reach for a lot of people. Right. You know, it's it's really what my first computer cost a lot more than that, mm -hmm. and and I mean, it, and the prices will only go down. They're coming down. Yeah, we were really fortunate. Um, we have a fantastic friends group, and they raise money for the library. So um, someone on the friends group had heard of other libraries getting 3D printers, and they wanted us to have one. So the friends made a donation to the library as a gift. And we were able to purchase a 3D printer, extra filament, some other equipment, and put together this maker lab. And that enabled us to offer it to members of the community for free. For free and use. when we talk about members of the community, it's not just children, although you're very adorable standing over there, all three of you. But it's also for seniors. It's for everybody in the community. And, and people like their parents are out, out of the camera view, but they're young. I'm not going to look at them and, and get jealous. But they're young. But it's for anybody who has any kind of interest. They can go in and just watch a workshop mm -hmm. or get more involved in it if they want. Definitely. The, I mean, the thing about the library is it's open to everybody. It levels the playing field, whether you can afford to have a, you know, a 3D printer or six at home or none at all. We make it available for someone who's 6, 16, 60. 86, whatever, everyone in between. And we'll show you how to use it. We'll show you the software, how to use the printer. And then it's really just about giving you the tools to realize your own dreams. You know, and then you also um, have different colors here. I was just going to ask my director if he could help me out and let me know how much time I have left because I'm not 100% sure. But, um, and, you have to, and, and you purchase all these through the library funds that are available for anybody to use. Right. So this is uh, the filament that comes through for the 3D printer. We do have it available in um, a number of different colors. It's also, right now we have uh, this hard plastic filament. We purchased um, a soft rubbery spool of filament, so we're going to be experimenting with that later. So what would, do so, you, you don't know what the difference would be? It's, well, it would be kind of like the silicone smartphone cases that, oh, that feel like that. Oh, okay, yes, so yes, we're, yes. That's, it's, it's a whole different way of printing with the settings, so we'll experiment with that. But there really are a lot of different options you have when printing. At the moment, we're not charging for printing. We want people to feel comfortable experimenting. Um, there's a lot of trial and error with mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. um, down the road, we just like we do with our paper prints, um, we'll have to begin to recoup the costs and we'll enact a charge then. Mm -hmm. But for right now, we want people to learn and to try things out. And enjoy it. Now, and you're the sweetest person I've ever met in my entire life. You're so sweet. You're so, you have the patience of a saint. And so if someone makes a mistake, they shouldn't feel uncomfortable working with you. Not at all. We'll help them as much as we can. And the thing is, we got this 3D printer um, late last summer. So we've had it for maybe six, seven, eight months. That was the first time I ever tried a 3D printer. So we're learning as much as anybody else is. You know, that was my question. I I'm, I'm keep on looking at your title, Development and Outreach Librarian. Is that a new position? It is. Um, I've been at the Blackstone Library for about four years, and I was a reference librarian. Um, we created this position back in September, and it's really a chance to focus on fundraising for the library as well as 
getting out into the community and raising visibility. Oh, well, you're a perfect spokesperson well, for thank that. You. And we only have a minute or two left. So if people wanted to contact you, what would be the best way to contact you? The best way to get in touch with me, um, I have email that I'm always checking. I have a phone. Um, my number is 203-488-1441, extension 313. Give me a call. Send me an email. We'll make an appointment to learn the 3D printer or any other piece of the Maker Lab equipment and we'll show you anything you need to know to get started. Well, that's great. And if they forget all of that information, they can just call, call the, library. the library and say they want to learn 3D that's printing. That's all they need. We'll find them. Because I'm thinking I might forget all <laughs> that. I have no memory. But if you just call, and even if you've forgotten her name, you can just ask, say you're interested in 3D printing. But before we take off, I want to just thank the kids over here. And is there anything, Kashi, that you would like to, excuse me, Rishi, that you would like to say before we sign off that you'd like to Say to the viewing um, audience. When the 3D printer's print, printing, you shouldn't touch the um, top because it's at 230 degrees Celsius while it's printing. So that is, that is good information, and how you remember that is beyond me. Kyle, what do, any last words you'd like to say? No. Well, it was a pleasure having you on the show. And Lila, how about you? Um, no. No. What a smile she has. I would just <laughs> sell that smile. If you have any questions and you'd like to contact me, my email is um, my email, jmdteach at comcast.net. You can go on my website, classroomconnections365.com, or you can always call the station here at BCTV. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Kids, you were a delight. And your parents were very good. They were very quiet. I noticed that in the background. But thank you thank so you. much. Thanks for having me. Thank you.